Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus again, and I'm just taking a moment right here to give a, an, a PR for this campaign to be the instrument whereby we change our society and created a brand new society. You watch the debate between the Democrats on yesterday evening, and I'm sure many of you were influenced and excited about all kinds of things, depending upon the one who addressed your concern. And I wonder if you got a group that addressed your concern, a group that, well, let's say 10 different people, that got their concerns addressed, and they are somewhat different. Otherwise, it would have been, what, everybody going for the same candidate. <clears throat> that didn't happen. Nevertheless, you're going to, in the end, choose one of these guys. And so one of these guys are going to have the support of uh, a great number of those of you who were satisfied at their presentation, and the rest of you will probably ride on that bandwagon just because you are a Democrat, giving up those things that were so important to you, and trying to put some emphasis on those things that were common amongst you all. <coughs> I'm so glad I can stand here today and talk to you about something that's totally different because uh, I'm not concerned about this little group or that little group. I'm concerned about every last one of you. And even though I know that in this mass public that there are those of you who are only concerned about yourselves and nobody else, well, I'm not your person. Except for each of you that are concerned about yourselves, there is one that is concerned about every last one of you, and that is the power that you can't see, can't touch, can't feel. And I stand here to speak for that power. And these few moments that I'm going to speak on, I'm going to talk about money, guns, and faith. Now, what I have recognized, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you can agree if you uh, can, and disagree if you can't, and if you're not sure, you can do your own research and see what you want to do. Most governments of the earth are controlled by the first two, money and guns. But I'm not going to deal with the other nations of the world. Let me just talk about America. Money and the gun. Now, what does that basically mean? That means that everybody here in America are concerned about the money. Why? Because with the money, you can do whatever your money will allow you to do. And what you will be allowed to do depends upon how much money you got. If you got as much money as you can handle, uh, your bank is overflowing, you got some stash somewhere overseas, you probably got unlimited potential. And at the expense of that, there are those who got nothing. There are people that are suffering. And because of that suffering, there are going to be some turmoils that's going to take place. There's going to be some angry, anger, some frustrations, and people are going to commit some acts against those rules and regulations that have been established to keep order now that you have uh, benefited from it yourselves. And when that happens, you're going to use your, your force. Your force is backed up by a gun. You can say and argue and, and stand up for what you represent, even if it's against those who you have driven to a point of committing crimes. But when that fails, you're going to pick up a gun and you're going to go after people either to get your cut or have a gun come at you to force you to accept your, your, your um, situation of life. Now, that's a sad statement. Now, I say this because that's the way of the governments of the world. That's been the way of the government of the United States since its, in, in its beginning. Now, many times it has been uh, going on for so long that we really don't pay too much attention to it. But we are in an era right now where we can't help but pay attention. And that's because of what happened at the last presidential election. A lot of people put their smarts, put their education, put their, their sense and intelligence aside and voted for evil. It didn't matter whether you got a, rep a Republican or a Democrat. It just so happened that you got a Republican. And this Republican, I don't know what the other evil Democrat would have been like, but this Republican... I mean, he's making it well aware of the power of money. He's even saying that if you want to come to this country, regardless of the hardships you might be running from, we don't want you. 
uh, unless you got some money, then you can get in. And even if you're here uh, because you were running from some problems and now you're sick and you're a burden on the money, we're going to kick you out. And for those of you who <clears throat> find that yeah, the crisis that you are enduring every day is so traumatic that you will find it easier to get on an inner tube, to get on a log and cross uh, big bodies of water just to get here. You're going to find out that there's a wall to say, no, you're not coming in here. We don't want you. We are filled up, so get back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we also, you've heard uh, the president talk about other people that they want to control the same way they want to control you. I'm talking about other nations. And other nations are doing the same thing. They're not going to go for it. They're going to be just like the criminal of this country. You can call them a world criminal, but they're saying we're not going to go for your rules and regulations. And in the meanwhile, the system of government here in America says, well, we're going to punish you. We're going to put some sanctions on you and we're going to hurt you. And what basically they're saying is that they're going to hurt the people of your nation until they rise up and attack you. So then that we can have our way. Not knowing that it might backfire and the people rise up to uh, come against those who's causing the pain. But in any instance, it doesn't matter if you got the right kind of gun. And everybody wants the right kind of gun so they can force their will, their way on other people, regardless of how it might really affect them. But the other part of that, ladies and gentlemen, is faith. Now, with faith, you can... Go where you want to go. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence of God. Evidence that all of the resources of the earth that we had no hand in making came from somewhere. And so since we can't see God, we're just associated with God. And so where we decide we want to walk on paths that might not have been laid or might not have been uh, highlighted, we can have faith, if we want to, that we can get to point A, point B, and to the end just by believing that the power that was able to do all the things that we as human beings have not been able to do can get us there and allowing us and enabling us to do those things that we have not done before. That is what we call faith. And so this campaign that I am offering to you today, ladies and gentlemen, is first of all to say to you to recognize what evil really is about. Now, we know that all nations are evil. We know that most all people are evil. Not that they were born evil, but when they come into an evil society, this is what they learn. This is what they become. Some more evil than others, but evil is evil. And when we say that the lesser of an evil, all, all we are doing is propping ourselves up to empower that evil by supporting that lesser evil rather than getting rid of evil altogether. My concern is that now is the time when we see evil right before us, when we see its manifestations right before us, the lies, the hypocrisy, the bigotry, the racism, and hatred that's going on right in our face. We can't deny this. We recognize that there are those who say, well, if that's the way it is, let me get on the side of it because I can benefit from it and to be damned to everybody else. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, if you got the heart, if you got the, the desire to want to be better than all of that, if you look at that and see it's ugly and you don't want to be known as ugly, you don't want to be known as low down and selfish, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to be that, but it is good. If there is someone that's offering you an alternative, Republicans, you know what they're going to do. Donald Trump is crazy to see him even still running for office. It doesn't even make any sense as much evil as he has shown. But nevertheless, nevertheless, the people are giving him support and counting him in. I mean, there are people in jail that have lied for him. And while he lies before you, right in your face, and you can back it up. He's not in jail. That's hypocrisy in itself. That's not hypocrisy on Donald Trump. That's hypocrisy on you, the American people. You allow one, say like Cone, his lawyer, to lie and go to prison. You allow that. Then you allow him to stand before you and lie. Now, the Cohen lies, it's just something that we just got 
a, a taste of. We were told of it. Now, the lies that he tells, we see it every day. But you're not putting him in jail. Your representatives not even trying to put him in jail. You know, you got people within uh, that organization, the House of Representatives, that want to. And you got others who, for one reason or another, don't want to even go that way. So you see that those are working against you. When you have a house divided, you're not going to really go any place. But this is what's happening. And that, as a voice for you, the American people, make you speak with hypocrisy. You put Cohen in jail. You allow Trump to do the same thing and go free. But that's because you have not had an alternative. I stand before you today, ladies and gentlemen, to give you an alternative per perspective. Now, I do not believe, and I might be wrong, that there is one of you, not a single one of you, would desire to live on this earth without food, clothing, and shelter. I do not believe there is one of you. I don't believe that there's one of you who would like to live in this country or anywhere on earth and get sick and then have health care. I don't believe that. I don't believe that there are those of you who would like to better yourselves with education or your uh, offspring with education. You would like to have it. I don't think you would say, I don't want health care. I don't want education. No, I don't think this would come out of your mouth. However, it is happening just like that. And for one reason or another, you hear people saying, well, I want to do something about it. Well, you've heard that every election. You've heard people say they want to do something about it. And today, that they are still saying that. And today, they're saying it because it hasn't happened. And I wonder what would happen to make you think that out of all these years when it has not happened, and these same voices are speaking and they're saying the same thing, that you're going to get anything different. Well, you did get something different when it came down to being worse. But I know when it comes to health care, there are those of you who are sick and do not have the adequate health care. You didn't have it in the past. That is probably a preeminent reason why you are sick today. There are people out here who are dying. And there are people who are suffering so much with the lack of those resources called money that they won't even be able to go to see their relatives and loved ones when they are sick. Not only that, they won't even be able to go to the funeral. They just have to stay at home and believe what the, somebody put in their scripture that says, let the dead bury the dead. And use that as an alternative, a substitute, a reason to say that it's okay for you to do like that. And when deep down inside, you really want to deal with that situation. How many of you got relatives that got some kind of incurable disease and were just waiting? And you know and you hate it and there's nothing you can do. And the system of health care don't give a darn. There are solutions to problems. You've read about it. You've heard about it. But some of these diseases that are not permitted to be made, uh, to, to be brought forward and introduced to the public health care system because it would eliminate that money-making apparatus. See, that's how powerful money is. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the alternative to, to that is the faith module. That's where you decide what you want. And basically, that was designed for you from the beginning before you even came here. They call them inalienable rights. And those inalienable rights says that if a human being is going to live on this earth, there are going to be some prerequisites for survival. And since that power that is almighty and all loving for every last one of you, not a bigot, made sure that whatever the, the requirements were, whatever the essentials are, that, that resources would be made available and that the gifts and talents would be instilled in various individuals to allow them to participate in the creative process, to abstract from those resources and cause a manifestation of what the goods and services are that you, the people, need. You, the people, need. All of the things that we see here on earth today, electric lights, trains, Cars, infrastructure, buildings, farming, all of these things came by because of, of faith. It didn't come by because man had some great idea. No, it was all of that was given from a power that we can't see for the benefit of every last one of you, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say that again. Every shelter that is, can, can be made out of the different structures, that came from the power you can't see. You probably didn't, well, there was some faith involved because those who came up with different ideas, they came up with those different ideas because they had been given a concept that allowed for progression. 
But it came from a power you can't see, can't touch, can't feel. Whether it had to do with education, health care, or going to the moon, it came from a power you can't see. And here it is today, ladies and gentlemen, wondering where we're going to go tomorrow. I'm suggesting that since every last one of you require these basic essentials that were designed from the beginning, you as a people, an intelligent people, a progressive people, should at least choose that for yourselves, approve that for each other, protect that for each other. It seems as if you should do that. Now, if, if one man wants to ride in a Rolls Royce and another a Cadillac, that doesn't, that, we're not trying to suggest that everybody um, support people riding in a Rolls Royce. If another man wants a Cadillac, go for the Cadillac. If a person wants to live in a cage, let them live in a cage. But don't force them to live in a cage. Don't say, we're not going to allow you out unless you do this. Let's have our system set up in such a way that all things are available to people that have been made at the hands of mankind. Let's guarantee that to one another. And now we won't have to use money. We don't need money for that. All we need is the people to do the things that's necessary to cause what we already have done. We did all of the stuff that's been done on earth, and it did not require money. Money was thrown into it to divide the house so we could have a Republican and a Democratic Party, so we can have what conservative and liberal. And what is that? So that some can have what others could not. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say that what I represent is for you to have the desires of your heart, but that no one's desire for your suffering could be empowered, not by me, but by you who understand that you got the power to prevent anything that does not work for all of you. And at the same time, you got the power to allow anything that works for all of you. And it is built on the power of faith. Faith, not that it's going to happen magically, but like it has always happened. You, the individual, will allow that spirit to guide you into whatever it is that's leading you, into where it's leading you, and you will allow it to be real in your life and make sure that it's guaranteed to cause no pain, no suffering to anyone, and, and fight against any virus. You know when the virus is on your computer? They say, oh, you need something. So the virus not is in the computer, but I'm not talking about that virus today. I'm talking about the virus that keeps you from having heaven on earth. And I want you to know that to have heaven on your earth, have heaven on earth, the power to do that is in your hands today. And when I stand here before you, it is to offer an alternative to the evil that's in the world today or a return to the evil that was existing yesterday and lift life up. And you got that power. I want you to know there is a God. I know it. I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm standing here because I know it. And because I know it, I want for you what that power wants for you. That power is not going to force it on you if you don't want it. And I don't have the ability to force it on you if you don't want it. But I must tell you, all of it, you can have it only if you want it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the subject matter that I want to pose on you. Money, gun, and faith. Where do you stand? I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time. Oh, let me say this before I go, because there might be those of you who haven't heard of me before, and you don't know what uh, the involvement is required of you as far as taking this forward. Well, I run as a write-in. I'm not asking for your money to give somebody on TV. I give anybody to analyze what I'm talking about. I'm not asking you for your money to do anything, but I do want you to go to the polls and write my name in. And in order for that to do it in such a magnitude that we can really go forward by overcoming the system of government, is for you to share with everybody you can, everybody you know, or everybody that you come in contact with, contact with that you don't know, about the power of you as individuals to exercise faith in the power that you can't see, but have an ambition, a dream that you want to cause a manifestation of, to join in with you. And on that day, go to the polls and write in Eddie Marcus, the next president of the United States, the champion of love that allows you to be alive and the possibilities beyond doubt for you to create your heaven on earth. Bye-bye.